In early 2020, as coronavirus infections rapidly increased, scientists scrambled to determine exactly how it spread. It was clear that it transmitted from person to person in close contact, but it wasn't clear how else it might spread. Experts suggested that it could be transmitted through surfaces, so officials began recommending wiping down all surfaces we interact with every day. This ignited a cleaning frenzy. Supply may be increasingly falling short. People concerned about the virus are stocking up on supplies. They brought a pallet of wipes on the floor, Clorox wipes on the floor. Within 35 seconds, they were gone. Throughout the year, studies began to suggest deep cleaning with disinfectants wasn't really necessary. But the government and public alike remained steadfast in their obsessive cleaning. Finally, in April 2021, the CDC updated its guidelines to suggest these disinfectants were likely not needed. Now, some officials even say these deep cleaning routines are doing more harm than good. So how did we get this so wrong? We worked alongside Cheddar reporter Michelle Castillo to find out. In 2020, we added a lot of new words to our vocabulary. Social distancing. Quarantine. Long haul symptoms. PPE. Asymptomatic. Initially, the World Health Organization said that the coronavirus spread through droplets and fomites. This was even confirmed in one early study that made headlines when scientists discovered that virus particles from a sneeze or a cough could live on surfaces like copper, cardboard, plastic, and steel for hours or even days. By May, health agencies around the world recommended disinfecting surfaces. Businesses, offices, and restaurants developed deep cleaning regimes and New York City's public transit services shut down for the first time ever overnight in order to disinfect subway cars and stations. By the end of the year, consumers worldwide spent $4.5 billion on disinfectants, up 30% from 2019. However, over the year, it became increasingly clear that services were an unlikely cause of spread. And on April 5th, 2021, the CDC officially updated its website. The CDC right now says it's about a one in 10,000 chance that you're going to get COVID from a surface. And what would actually have to happen is a virus would have to be alive on a surface. So maybe someone sneezed on it or they spit on it. And within an hour, you would have to pick up that live virus and put it directly in your mouth. Essentially, the year we spent disinfecting our world played a small role if any, in preventing the spread of COVID-19. What's worse is that it wasn't just unproductive. It came with consequences. Some of these chemicals used are really harsh and harmful. And there's been a huge spike in calls to poison control centers since the pandemic started. And that's because people are you know, disinfecting themselves into harm's way. Typical ingredients in disinfectants include bleach and hydrogen peroxide. When these are mixed together, it's like breathing in poison, says Delphine Farmer, an atmospheric chemist at Colorado State University. Heavy use over time has been shown to result in eye and skin irritation, asthma, lower fertility rates, and lung diseases. And then there's another concern, the effect of disinfectants on a microscopic level. Can it create superbugs and super viruses because they become, I guess, resistant to our cleaning supplies? Yeah, the virus doesn't become resistant to the cleaning supply. It's very fragile, it dies very quickly. Sunlight kills it in a matter of minutes. So it's not that the virus becomes resistant to these chemicals. Now you might have a, a case for some bacteria becoming resistant to cleaning agents, but that's because bacteria are living creatures. They reproduce, they have their own genetic material. How did scientists get it so wrong in the first place? In the early days of the pandemic, when scientists began swabbing services for the virus in hospitals, it was everywhere. Specifically, these services had traces of viral RNA. Now, there's been a lot of research looking for the virus RNA on surfaces and, and elsewhere. And when you find it, all that that tells you is that the virus was once there, and is most likely dead at that point. It's like the corpse of the virus. Experiments did show the virus itself could live on surfaces for days, but it's now clear that laboratory settings did not accurately simulate a real-world environment. The 
thing that we have to understand is that those studies are very controlled. In fact, they put a large amount of COVID-19 on those surfaces and then waited for that virus to die. So it's a little different from seeing if a virus could survive on a surface, which is what we should be more fearful of. Despite this knowledge, businesses, public transportation, and restaurants are still using these disinfectants. Germs in general, you just don't see them around, but what you can see is when something's clean and you can actually control the idea that something is clean by physically wiping something down. The problem is that since it is such a compulsive, repetitive behavior, we can, we can sort of get stuck in that loop and that's what um, anxiety disorders are. So anybody who has a tendency or a history of anxiety disorder or who really finds themselves you know, continuing to clean, wipe down surfaces, etc., that can really lead to a form of, of OCD. Instead of paying so much attention to cleaning surfaces, we might be better off paying attention to cleaning the air, states Lindsay Marr, an engineering professor at Virginia Tech. Methods like UV lights and better ventilation would be more effective and less harmful. Bottom line is, the best ways to prevent contracting the coronavirus are to stick to mask and social distancing and getting the vaccine as soon as it's available to you, of course.